It's safe to assume that the most, if not all, of us want to live long and healthy lives, which necessitates paying attention to the meals we consume. We all know it's preferable to consume as much whole, unprocessed food as possible, but which foods are especially bad for us. In this video we will determine which meals we should try to skip most of the time to increase our chances of living a long and healthy life. Processed Meats According to dietitians, processed meats are one of the foods to avoid. Processed meats are commonly cured, smoked, and pumped full of salt or other preservatives to extend shelf life. Bacon, sausage, hot dogs, salami, and cold-cut lunch meats are the most common processed meats that we are all familiar with and enjoy. Overconsumption of these items changes the gut microbiome's composition, resulting in abnormalities that can lead to chronic inflammatory illnesses. The World Health Organization has currently classified these forms of processed meats as harmful. Artificial sweeteners While we are all aware of the importance of limiting our sugar intake, many people appear to feel that swapping artificially sweetened versions of their favorite foods or beverages is a healthier option. Artificial sweeteners have been related to diabetes, neurological abnormalities, liver problems, and other health problems. These drugs trick the body into thinking it is consuming calories, and when it realizes it isn't, sugar cravings grow, leading to even more health issues. These sweeteners have been linked to dysbiosis, or an imbalance in the protective bacterial populations in the gut microbiome. Beneficial germs like Lactobacilli and Bifidobacteria are falling, while less helpful species like Bacteroids are growing, according to studies. These alterations can lead to bodily imbalances, which have been related to many of today's chronic health problems, such as inflammation, obesity, cancer, and even autism. Dairy Products Foods made from or containing milk from mammals such as cattle, water buffaloes, goats, sheep, and camels are known as dairy goods. Dairy items include yogurt, cheese, ice cream, butter, and condensed and dry milk. Those who consume dairy products may experience stomach issues due to lactose intolerance or a milk allergy. Lactose intolerance causes mild symptoms such as bloating, diarrhea, gas, and nausea, which can be avoided by avoiding milk and other lactose-containing dairy products. People who are lactose intolerant can utilize non-dairy milk substitutes. Raw milk is a potentially dangerous product that must be pasteurized and protected before being consumed. While most bovine diseases have been eradicated, including brucellosis and tuberculosis, the dairy farm environment still retains a number of deadly human pathogens. As a result, all milk must be pasteurized, or if cheese is created from raw milk, it must be refrigerated for at least 60 days. While milk from healthy cows is typically bacteria-free, this condition quickly changes when the milk is exposed to the farm environment. When dairy products are ingested, they contain saturated fat, carbs, hormones, and antibiotic residues, all of which are damaging to your health. It irritates the digestive tract and contributes to heart disease, diabetes, acne, and weight gain by producing insulin-like growth factor. It has also been related to the prevention of cancer. While this is one point of view, it's important to keep in mind that the evidence on the nutritional harm and or benefit of dairy is still inconclusive. Soda Drinking soda sweetened with sugar or high fructose corn syrup comes with its own set of dangers, such as an increased risk of diabetes and dental damage. Soda use has been linked to obesity. Despite the fact that a single can of soda provides 140 calories, it is almost certain to provide minimal hunger relief. Regular and Diet Coke intake has been linked to an increase in the incidence of type 2 diabetes. Because soda raises blood sugar levels, your body is compelled to turn it to fat in your liver. The refined sugar in soda is easily absorbed, causing a spike in blood sugar. This rise in blood sugar triggers the production of insulin, which can swiftly turn sugar into fat, particularly around the waist. Sweetened soda consumption, as well as diabetes, obesity, and uncontrolled blood pressure, have all been linked to an increased risk of heart failure. Your risk of stroke rises with each sip of soda. Soda causes fat deposits to form in the body, some of which can contribute to arterial hardening, particularly around the brain, increasing the risk of stroke. Soda is practically the same as drinking simple sugar with chemicals added to it. Because of the simple carbs, it causes a rapid insulin response with a blood sugar spike. 
Insulin resistance, metabolic syndrome, and diabetes are possible results if this cycle continues. Water is usually the best beverage for staying hydrated and soothing your thirst, but seltzer is a good option if you're drinking soda for the bubbles or flavor. If you're searching for a caffeine boost, coffee or tea are great alternatives to soda. Fried foods. According to new research, eating fried foods is significantly connected to an increased risk of major cardiovascular events like heart attack and stroke. Researchers analyzed data from 17 independent trials with over 560,000 individuals and over 36,700 major cardiovascular events to calculate cardiovascular disease risk. Those who ate the most fried meals each week had a 28% increased risk of stroke and heart attack when compared to those who ate the least. When a meal is fried, the outside half loses water and absorbs the fat or oil, making it more calorically dense. The oils used to fry foods include trans fat, which has been shown to raise your LDL, low-density lipoprotein. LDL cholesterol is the dangerous type of cholesterol. Atherosclerosis, a type of heart disease, can develop when high cholesterol builds up in the walls of your arteries. Saturated fat is found in many animal sources, including fatty steak, lamb, pork, and butter, as well as many plant-based oils used in the frying process, such as palm oil, palm kernel oil, and coconut oil. Those who had the most fried meals had a 37% increased risk of heart failure than those who consumed the least. Heart failure is a chronic progressive condition in which the heart muscle fails to pump enough blood. Those who ate fried meals four to six times a week had a 39% higher risk of developing type 2 diabetes than those who ate them less than once a week. People who ate it seven or more times a week had a 55% increased risk of contracting the condition. High sodium foods. Salt, commonly known as sodium chloride, is made up of around 40% sodium and 60% chloride. It's utilized as a flavoring agent, as well as a binder and stabilizer. Because germs can't survive in a salty environment, it's also used as a food preservative. The human body requires a small quantity of sodium to transport nerve impulses, contract and relax muscles, and maintain proper water and mineral balance. We need about 500 milligrams of sodium per day to perform these vital functions. Consuming too much salt, on the other hand, can lead to high blood pressure, heart disease, and stroke. It can also cause calcium loss, some of which comes from the bones. In most people, the kidneys struggle to keep up with the extra salt in the blood. As salt builds up in the body, the body tries to dilute it by holding on to water. This raises both the volume of blood in the bloodstream and the amount of fluid surrounding the cells. With higher blood volume, the heart has to pump harder, and the blood arteries are put under additional strain. Blood vessels can stiffen as a result of the increased labor and strain, resulting in high blood pressure, heart attack, and stroke. It has the potential to lead to cardiac failure as well. Excess salt may injure the heart, aorta, and kidneys without rising blood pressure, and it may even harm bones, according to some studies. Sodium is one of those nutrients that seeks you, rather than the other way around. Nearly all unprocessed foods, such as fruits, vegetables, whole grains, nuts, meats, and dairy products, have low sodium levels. The majority of salt in our diets comes from professionally prepared meals, not from salt added to home cooking, or even at the dinner table. The top 10 sources of salt in our diets include breads rolls, pizza, sandwiches, cold cuts cured meats, soups, burritos, tacos, savory snacks, chips, popcorn, pretzels, crackers, poultry, cheese, eggs, omelets. Trans fats. Trans fat is the most harmful type of fat you can eat. Unlike other dietary fats, trans fat, also known as trans fatty acids, raises bad cholesterol while decreases good cholesterol. Heart disease, the main cause of death in adults, is increased by a diet heavy in trans fat. When you ingest more trans fat, your risk of heart and blood vessel disease rises. The majority of trans fat is made in an industrial process that involves adding hydrogen to vegetable oil and allowing it to solidify at room temperature. Because this partially hydrogenated oil is less likely to decompose, foods made with it have a longer shelf life. Several restaurants use partly hydrogenated vegetable oil in their deep fryers since it doesn't need to be changed as often as other oils. Some meat and dairy products include a small amount of naturally occurring trans fat. 
it is unknown whether this naturally occurring trans fat has any benefits or drawbacks. The manufactured form of trans fat, known as partially hydrogenated oil, may be found in a variety of food products, including baked goods, such as cakes, cookies and pies, shortening, microwave popcorn, frozen pizza, refrigerated dough, such as biscuits and rolls, fried foods, including french fries, donuts and fried chicken, non-dairy coffee creamer and stick margarine. Doctors are concerned about added trans fat because it increases the risk of heart attacks, strokes, and type 2 diabetes. Trans fat also has a deleterious effect on cholesterol levels. There are two main types of cholesterol, low-density lipoprotein, LDL, or bad, cholesterol can build up in the walls of your arteries, making them hard and narrow. High-density lipoprotein, HDL, or good, cholesterol picks up excess cholesterol and takes it back to your liver. Trans fat increases your LDL cholesterol and decreases your HDL cholesterol. If fatty deposits within your arteries break or rupture, a blood clot may form and impede blood flow to a part of your heart, causing a heart attack, or to a part of your brain, causing a stroke. Trans fat, particularly the man-made variety found in partially hydrogenated vegetable oil, does not appear to have any known health benefits. According to specialists, trans fat should be avoided as much as possible. Trans fat-free foods aren't necessarily the healthiest. Other ingredients could be substituted for trans fat, which could be advantageous or harmful. Several of these components, such as tropical oils including coconut, palm kernel, and palm oils, are high in saturated fat. Saturated fat raises total cholesterol. In a healthy diet, fat may account for 20% to 35% of total daily calories. Saturated fat should account for no more than 10% of your total daily calories. Monounsaturated fat, which is found in olive, peanut, and canola oils, is a healthier alternative to saturated fat. Nuts, salmon, and other foods containing unsaturated omega-3 fatty acids are also abundant in healthy fats. High Fructose Corn Syrup High fructose corn syrup is a common sweetener in sodas and fruit-flavored drinks. With the increased use of high fructose corn syrup, obesity and related health risks have increased. Some people believe there is a link between the two. High fructose corn syrup HFCS, is a chemically similar sweetener to table sugar that is often found in processed foods and sodas. However, whether the body reacts differently to high fructose corn syrup than it does to table sugar is a point of contention. Our appetite and satiation hormones are affected by high fructose corn syrup. High fructose corn syrup disrupts both ghrelin, our hunger hormone, and leptin, our satiation hormone. Unlike glucose, sugar, fructose fools the body into suppressing leptin, causing us to feel hungry even after eating. At this time, there isn't enough evidence to demonstrate that high fructose corn syrup is less healthful than other sweeteners. Weight gain, type 2 diabetes, metabolic syndrome, and higher triglyceride levels have all been linked to too much added sugar of any kind, not just high fructose corn syrup. All of these things make you more likely to get heart disease. Low-fat alternatives Choosing lower fat options to prevent trans fats while also avoiding the saturated fat found in fried foods seems like a good idea, right? Wrong. Fats are an important part of a healthy, well-balanced diet, but when the fat in these low-fat foods is removed, something else must be used in its place. That something could be sugar artificial sweeteners, taste enhancers, or even trans fats. Because of all of these reasons, the food item is less healthy than its full-fat cousin. It is also advocated to eat healthy fat foods like nuts, seeds, salmon, and avocado because studies have shown that people prefer to consume up to 50% more when they chose low-fat items. Foods marketed as fat-free, reduced fat, low-fat, or sugar-free aren't always calorie-free, and they commonly contain unhealthy additives like salt, sugar, and chemical fillers. Reduced fat foods often have roughly the same calorie content as their full-fat counterparts. It's also important to remember that fat-containing foods aren't always bad. Fats, in fact, are vital for feeling satisfied after eating, which helps with appetite control and should account for at least 30% of your daily calories. It is recommended that you focus on consuming healthy fats rather than those with health claims like reduced fat. Monounsaturated fats, such as those found in nuts, olive oil, and avocados, have been shown to lower LDL or bad cholesterol, while raising HDL or good cholesterol levels in the blood. 
LDL cholesterol has been shown to be reduced by omega-3 fats found in fatty seafood like salmon and anchovies. Trans fats, which cause inflammation in the body, should also be avoided to the maximum extent possible.